Hello, we want to welcome you. My name is Bill. It's so glad to be with you. I'm not too sure how you came to, to join us today, but maybe you're with our, one of our groups already and you're sitting in your group. Maybe you've just tuned in to us for the first time. Maybe somebody told you about this. Maybe you found us on Facebook or on YouTube. Whatever the case, we're so glad you're with us. So thank you for joining us. We're excited to continue on this series on the body of Christ. This week is amazing. Rose is, Rose is with us this week as we look at a teaching that we are calling Identifying with the Head of the Body. So this is such a key principle for us and we're excited to dive into it. Um, I want to remind you, stay with us. At the end of this message, we quickly recap this message and we leave you with some takeaways that we want you to take with you as you head into the week and you can get them deeply embedded in your mind and in your spirit, in your heart, so they become truth to you. And so God bless you. Open your heart and your mind to receive as we head into this teaching and hang with us. We'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much for joining me again this week. We are continuing our series on the body of Christ. What a powerful series. You know, this morning, um, actually, I when I woke up and getting ready to record the video, I had so many things to talk about. And even though we are like maybe halfway through the series and we feel like we talked about a lot of things, but it feels like we are just scratching the surface. I remember a few years ago, or let's say when we had just become a Christian, um, Masood and I started studying the book of Colossians together. And um, I remember myself saying like hundred times probably that, you know, why nobody's talking about these things? Why we haven't heard it? It was about two years into our Christian life. And of course, because we were, we had just become a Christian and, you know, two years into Christianity, we were listening to a lot of teachings out there and somehow when we got to the book of Colossians and studying this book we are like why nobody's talking about these things that actually you know it's not that nobody's talking we hadn't heard it so we got to this verse that Paul uh, is writing in the Colossians and is talking about the mystery of of Christ and I want to take you to there because today in this video you and I are going to see that we are part of the mystery of God so let me take you there and um, uh, this verse is gonna be like foundational foundation in your teaching in your understanding it's the verse that is going to hold you keep you it's a verse that is not letting you go off track it's just the verse that you want to hang on to in every season of your life. Because when I had the revelation of it, my life was changed. And hopefully today I pray that your life also will be changed when you start seeing how beautiful is the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. So let's go to Colossians chapter chapter 1. And in Colossians chapter 1, I just want to say something in bracket for those of you who want to have a deeper study on your own. So the book of Colossians is mostly focused on the head of the Christ, okay? And now the book of Ephesians are is about the body of Christ. And today we are going to like tap into some of the mysteries hidden in these two books. So now look at Colossians chapter 1. Um, so, uh, you know, the, the verse that I want to take you to, it's verse 27, probably a very familiar verse for most, most of us, but we just got to step back a little to understand what this verse is talking about. So look at this, look at verse 24. This is where Paul is writing and he says, I know, I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up in my flesh that what is lacking in the affliction of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. So first of all, here Paul revealed to us that there is a Christ who has a body and the body of this Christ is the church. Many years we thought that the Christ is that Jesus who was born from Mary. And let me tell you that, yes, he is the Christ. 
Jesus is the Christ, but the Christ is not Jesus only because here Paul revealed to us that this Christ has a body and the body of this Christ is the church. Okay, did you just see? So we are talking about a person here. He's not talking about the bodies. He's talking about one body which is going to be, which has only one head and has that and is basically that one person. So now maybe I should just, um, you know, share my screen here and we can um, write down as we move on. And so I, I love, I love it. Then I study the Bible on my own. I draw as much as possible so I can see what is going on. So you have the screen here. Let me just um, come to this side and grab here so therefore we have a person because it is talking about the body of christ okay so because it is talking about the body okay sorry one hand is shorter than the other but this is just the writing okay <laughs> so because there is a talking about a body so therefore we need to understand that this is talking about a person so when we say the body of rose okay or the body of masood so basically what we are saying is that this body has an identity of the person so when we say for example now i'm sitting here so i am rose okay so when you look at me you just don't see my head separated from my body because the whole package together is called rose right so and it is true for every person so if this is the body of christ therefore this person is called the christ okay so this person is called the christ so we have one person that is called the Christ and maybe this is a good place to see we don't have we don't have Christ as the uh, you know uh, many Christ we have only one person that is called Christ okay so what does that mean that means there is one person but many members many members of the same body so therefore here we see okay if this person is the christ and it says the body of christ is the church we just read it right the church is the body of christ i'm not adding things and i'm not explaining things from my own opinion i'm just reading the scriptures here and just picturing it what we are seeing if this person has a body and the body of christ is the church so did you, do you see that actually this church is part is a member of this christ as the body okay so this is one of the most powerful revelations that you can have and every single time that i touch on it and every time i dig deep in this the carnal mind in me and i know in those who probably hear is gonna rise up and start saying oh this is a blasphemy or start like defending or opposing this what are you seeing here have you ever seen have you ever seen a head walking around without a body the answer is no right have you ever seen a body walking around without the head okay and i think your answer i probably your answer is no okay so we have never seen it's going to be weird if a body is walking around without the head and head without the body but i want to i want you to see this okay so if i come and if you if you cover up my face here okay so let's say you know my face is covered but then i'm gonna have my hand coming out if you had never seen my hand 
with this face before, you would probably don't know who the hand is for, who this hand is, for who's the person behind this hand. Is this Rose's hand? Is this Masood's hand? Is this so? The, it is the face or the head that is revealing to the revealing the identity of the other members okay so now when we talk about rose so i'm gonna put myself here in the center because i don't have anyone else here around me so when you when you hear the name rose you immediately probably remember not only my face but you remember probably my hair the way i talk speak teach my character my personality or anything okay so now this is the same thing when it comes to the body of christ okay so the body of christ let me share here the body of christ where does the body starts from usually the body starts from here down right is from neck from the head down okay but we can still see and say that the head is also a member of this body do you see the head is also part of the body the whole thing together is called the body but for the sake of understanding and breaking things down let's just say from neck down is called the body and from the neck up let's call this the head okay so therefore we have a head and we have the body and I'm gonna put here right in front of the Christ remove the S here because we have only one man that is called the Christ and this Christ is the head and the body together so separately yes the head is the Christ and the body is the Christ but something that i want you to see the unity of the head and the body together so one of the things that i was going to talk and hopefully i'm going to talk in the next few videos is that unity that you're talking the unity of the body of christ so but the unity that we talk here which i'm going to dive deeper into it later is the unity of the body and the head together okay so now if you pay attention to the picture here the christ is the head and the body together because none of these separately mean anything in our lives we will never have a head walking around without the body and we will never have a body walking around without the head if that's the case if the body and the head are separated from each other they both are dead Okay, do you see the picture here? So please open up your ears to the spirit because we are talking about the mystery of Jesus Christ. None of these things we are talking make sense in the flesh. In the flesh, I am a separate person than someone else. We can never be one together. We are revealing the mysteries that the spirit is breathing into the scriptures for us so we can know who we are and what is our part in this fellowship in this mystery which Paul later comes and says it's the fellowship of the body with the head so basically so now here, here's the thing so now we have the Christ and the Christ is the head and the body but if let's say something happens and you know um for example i get to an accident or whatever my my head is cut off okay so the moment if you know me and you see a head sitting right there for example okay so if you see my head you could immediately say okay this is rose you don't see the body you are just seeing the head but now if they find the body without the head then what's going to happen? Nobody's going to know whose body it is unless they bring someone from the family or something. Guys, can you look at the body? Do you think this is Rose? Probably they look for some marks in the body to identify the body, right? So, so basically, the 
somebody who has already seen me with the head can tell if my hand is for this person. So the same thing comes with the body of Christ. Your identity of who you are as the body of this person comes from your head. Okay, let me share here. Your head, your head is what gives an identity to your hand, to your feet, or to any other members. That's the head that identifies who the body is. I want you to write it down. That's the head that identifies who the body is. So now, many of us, I, when I was a Muslim, I was walking around knowing my, not knowing my identity. I didn't know who I am. I didn't know why I came to this world. I had no idea about anything. I didn't know who I am. I didn't know my identity. So until all of a sudden I opened the Bible and I started reading the Bible and we got to the book of Romans for those of you who know our story. And now we realized who Jesus Christ is. So we started having an idea. We started learning our head, learning, knowing who our head is. And in that knowing of who the head is, you are immediately being enlightened as who you really are. Okay, so so that's when you start finding security and purpose for your life. And I remember I thought and I told myself and Masood and I, we talked together, if we were Muslims and read this book once and we came to the knowledge of the head, let's say, of Jesus Christ, how much more is hidden that I don't know and I'm still in lack I'm still in not knowing my identity in some areas because I don't know the head. Okay, so I want to I want to take you to uh, let's go to um, Ephesians. So Ephesians chapter five. Okay. So open up your ears to the spirit or continue to listening to the spirit because we are going to read some verses here. And some of us have some probably had some bad experiences in the flesh and we don't hear what the spirit says. That's in Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. It says, wives, submit to your own husband as to the Lord for the husband is the head of the wife. So now if, you know, some of us, didn't have the good like like relationship when you read this you think oh my goodness you know I don't want to submit to my husband and if Christ is the husband and then all of a sudden you have that feeling of rejection but I want you to open up your ears Paul is revealing the mystery of Christ here look at verse 23 as Christ is the head of the church now I'm going to share my screen here so now so Christ is the head. So I'm going to write here, Christ is the head of the church. Okay. So it says the head is the Christ. Okay. Christ is the head of the church. But uh, we read it in Colossians that the church is the body of the Christ. Okay, so now just let's read this a little more carefully. Okay, I can either say head of rose, okay, or I can say rose's head, okay. So if I say rose's head here, you think of one person who has a head. So Rose's head, you immediately remember this head, okay? But the moment I say head of Rose, okay, this one. This could give an, the impression of, okay, you are... There is a, there is rose here. 
one person with head and body and somebody else here is actually over as the head over this person so when you read head of rose it could have a meaning of this as a head or it could also have the meaning of okay rose as a separate person having someone else as the head did you just see the picture so when I say Rose's head, there's only one person with a head. But when we talk about the head of Rose, it could have two meanings. It could either have this, the head of Rose, or it could have also the meaning of, okay, Rose is a separate person with another person to be the rulers and authority and head over this person, right? So now I want you to see what this verse is reading like what I highlighted here as yellow. Okay, so why? Because we read in other verse that the body of Christ and we had, we have the head of Christ. Okay, so that doesn't mean that there is a church sitting here somewhere as a person and now the Christ, Jesus Christ as the head is over this person. That could have the meaning and revelation for itself on its own. But today in this video, I want to bring deeper understanding of this mystery to realize that okay as the body of Christ who you think you are your identity everything comes from your head and the more you know how your head thinks and follows and how your head operates and lives you will start living the way that the head lives the whole purpose here is to realize that if Jesus, now let me actually, you know what, let me just read this for you. Let's go to Colossians. Let's go back to Colossians. Look at verse 25. It says, of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now has been revealed to his saints. Okay, did you just see? It says, okay, there is a, we are dealing with a mystery. A mystery that now has been revealed to who? To the church. Now, let's take a look at here. Why is it that the mystery is being revealed to the church? Because church is the body of this head which is the Christ so the mystery of Christ is being revealed to the body of Christ let me repeat it again so now maybe you go around and say oh, I, I am the body and I have all the mysteries revealed to me no 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 here it says the mystery is being revealed to somebody when that person finds their own identity in the head not in something else okay let me repeat that again the mystery is being revealed to those who find themselves in that identity of the head okay what does that mean let me just say it and I'm gonna go really sharp and I'm gonna go really you know <laughs> um, I could go open up the scriptures hours upon hours to explain to you the next 10 minutes, but I'm going to say it for the, you know, sake of those who really want to hear it. If the head says, if the head says, like, like now my head is talking, if the head says, I am the Christ, that means the head just gave an identity to the body. So now the body must hear what the head says, must obey and submit to what the head says, and must submit herself to the uh, identity, to the power, to the authority of the head. If the head says, I am the Christ, the body must come to realize that I am not separated from the head. If my head is the Christ, then I am the Christ. Okay. It sounds really blasphemous to so many. Like, what do you mean? I remember when we were reading Colossians 1, Master, and exactly we drew this. This is like 2013, like a long time ago. And 
And I remember we just dropped our Bible and we are like, oh my goodness, we are the Christ. We are the Christ. If we are part of this, if we are the body of this Christ. And, and I remember we didn't talk about it anywhere. We, go, we would go to church and I told Masood, every time we would go to church, I would just tell him, Masood, don't talk about these things we learn in the church. They're not going to like it, you know. I just had this fear of rejection, I would say, or fear of uh, fear of um, having someone being offended at the truth that I say. And honestly, I way past that, <laughs> you know, that I there is a revelation that is being given to me and I'm going to speak it and some people are not going to like it. And hopefully in time, they will come to understand this. If the head says, I am the Christ, the body must realize that I was just given an identity that I didn't know I had because I am part of this mystery. Now, I want to ask you a question. What else the head says that their body must come to realize, must come to realize that they are actually that? What else it says? One of the books that reveals to us Jesus Christ is the book of Revelation. Let me just take you there to Revelation chapter 1. <clears throat> and let me just show you, I can show you many verses. Okay, so now um, look at verse 8. Revelation chapter 1 verse 8, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, says the Lord, okay, who is, who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. So usually when we read these verses, or you know, let's go to the verse 18, you know, verse 18, oh, you know, yeah, let's verse, verse 18, it says, I am he who lives and who was dead and behold I am alive forevermore, and I have the keys of Hades and death. Write these things which you have seen. You know, usually when we read it, and I still do, and it's nothing wrong with it, you see Jesus Christ, Jesus, who died for the church, is talking here. But that's when we have to go a little deeper, a little shift into reading these things, little maturing and realizing, okay, this person that is speaking here is our head that is talking. The voice always comes out from the head, but it's the body that follows the voice. It's the body that subjects to the voice. The voice comes out of the head, right? But later on, actually, to be honest, the book of Revelation says the voice even comes out of the body. But now here's the thing. If the body says, this is who I am. If the body says, I am the Alpha and the Omega. And if the head says, and now you take a look at here. If the head says, I am the Alpha and Omega. So can the body says, oh, I'm not the Alpha and Omega. For example, if my head says, I am Rose. Can my hand get up, get, gets up and say, I am not Rose. Okay, like, no, this is not going to happen. This is my body. This is part of who I am. This is part of my identity. So if the head says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the body must hear and realize that who she is. You just, you didn't know you are the Alpha and the Omega until your head told you you are. Okay, guys. I'm sorry, I am not taking the place of Jesus here. I am giving a place, I am making you to sit in the place that Jesus wants you to sit. Let me repeat it again. I've heard this and probably maybe it's going through your mind. I've preached this message before in our YouTube channel and I've had, had people telling me you are taking away Jesus's place and I'm saying no. I am taking the place that Jesus has given us. I am stepping into that identity. I am not, you know, let me tell you this. The carnal fleshly understanding of a scriptures or whatever, or God, it all, always tries to remove and separate us from God. This is called religion. For years and years, carnal men try to explain and understand the spiritual God. And in this process 
of defining and redefining the spirit being being while you are in the flesh causes you to bring that separation that was never never happened it's your understanding carnality that gave you an identity that is apart from the head the christ that's why in the book of revelation the beast have seven heads but we are in under one head the christ so religion always wants to separate you from who jesus christ is and in some deeper level to separate god from jesus christ that's why there are so many debates going around that oh no jesus can, jesus is not god or jesus is not father and finding and trying to find an identity for god or father apart from jesus christ is false the same way that you try to find an identity for yourself apart from who Christ says. And do you see why are we digging down the scriptures, reading, chewing down, submitting, knowing who our head is? Because the moment real you realize who he is, you find yourself in that identity, that power. That's why the book of Revelation jesus writes to seven churches by the way why because they have gone to different doctrines and seven heads of the dragon now jesus as a, as one head is coming to this church to and writing and in the beginning of every letter he says who he is because that church must have forgotten must have missed who he really is and that's why it's have go, this church is gone to the wrong doctrine for example you know the church um uh, my time is almost up but let me just wrap this up a couple of minutes the church in the first church look at this jesus writes in revelation chapter 2 to the church in ephesus and says these things says he who holds the seven stars in the right hand who walks in the middle in the midst of the seven golden lampstands we don't even know what that means so many of us do we know jesus as the one who walks in the midst of the lampstand apparently we're supposed to know if you don't know we will end up where the church of ephesus is and overcoming doesn't make sense to us anymore let me show you here um uh, i am look at verse look at verse eight to the church of smyrna these these things says the first and the last who was dead and he became to life so do you see this church has forgotten that the head was the one who died and is now alive and let me tell you if your head is alive what's going to happen to you as the body so my whole you know message here today was that you need to find the ident your identity through the head as maybe north american pronunciation is your ident your identity <laughs> so but what i want to say here is um you know um i i was teaching on this a few years ago and um somebody got up and somebody said you know so we are this and this person went around telling everyone you know um so we are god like for example and and i remember uh we uh, at that moment i was like okay if you really come to a conclusion say okay um you know i can just stand in, the, in front of the mirror and say i am god i am the christ and you know you didn't understand the message if that's the conclusion that you are getting because the emphasis of this message is not who you are the emphasis of this message is who you are because of who he says you are the focus is him who he is and what he has done who he says you are and if you don't find that through his love and his words and his revelations 
you're going to end up believing something but never experiencing it. Let me just exp say another story. We went to the uh, we went to the Costco for those of you who are in the uh, in North America, you know about Costco, it's a shopping center, shopping mall. No, it's a shopping store. So we went there and we just uh, grabbed uh, something to eat and it was busy. This is long before all these, you know, uh, restrictions. And these two guys came and sat by in our table and I heard them talking about how we are gods, okay? So I don't know exactly what happened. So I, Masood and I, we kind of got to, the, to involve ourselves in the conversation. And, um, or maybe they were listening to us and they asked us a question. I don't exactly remember. But what happened was they're like, okay, you know, they believe we are gods. So I looked at him and I said, you know what? You are God, but you die like a man. So, okay, you heard something which could be true or not, but let's say it is truth. But if you don't find that truth in the person of Jesus Christ, the mystery of all ages, you end up believing some, something and never experiencing it, and that is called religion. Religion has parts of truth in it. That's why people follow all those religions. Like I came from Islam and if you go and read the book of uh, Muslims, you see that there's a lot of truth in there. God is merciful. God is loving. God is forgiving. God is judge. God is just. Of course, God is. But is this just because you something you believed about God and then it later on mixed it with some other doctrines or and not knowing who he really is as your head? We are dealing with the mystery of Jesus Christ. And that's why our aim is to know our head. And let me tell you this, please, if you come across a belief, a teaching, your own belief or something that is separating you from the head, trying to give an identity to you apart from who Jesus Christ is, that's where you are listening to the dragon's head, not to the Christ as your head. Because Christ has never seen himself separated from his own body. How do I know? When Jesus appeared to Paul, to Saul of Tarsus, he told Saul, Jesus Christ told Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then Saul asked, who are you, Lord? Do you know what happened to Saul of Tarsus that day? Do you, he asks, who are you? And before he finishes the sentence, he answered his own question and he said, Lord, who are you, Lord? And Jesus Christ replied, I am the one basically that you are persecuting. Who was Jesus persecuting? Who was Saul persecuting? Saul was persecuting the body of Christ, the church. Saul was persecuting the church. So Jesus didn't appear to Saul and say, why are you persecuting my church? Or why are you persecuting my body? No, he didn't. He said, you are persecuting me. He never seen you separated from you. You have never been separated from him. In your mind and understanding, maybe, but in the truth, no. That's why today you and I are realizing who we are and finding our way back, our mind. Every member of the body of Christ must come to have a mind that the head has. And that's the journey of what we are doing. And that's the journey of the body of Christ. What a powerful subject. Thank you so much for being with me today. And I will see you in the next teaching. Welcome back, family. It's good to have you with us. Wow, what a teaching. This teaching was one of those Selah moments that made you really stop and think. We always say this, it, the gospel is simple, but deeply profound. And so one of the little hints you can take with you is once it starts to feel complex um, and it starts to feel like there's too much that you have to do, it's time to go back to the simplicity of truth. 
And that's what we're so excited to encounter this week. So let's get to it and look at these principles that we read about and we learned about identifying with the head. The first point is this, and we've made this point once before early on in this series, is that you can't separate the body from the head. And so you will never have the head walking around without the body, and you'll never have the body walking around without the head. Just the image of that is pretty silly, right? So we read in Colossians chapter 1, I think it's 15 through 18. I'm going to read verse 18 to you just to quickly summarize here. It says, he is the head of the body, which is the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. So we see that Jesus Christ is the body, but what's he the body of? He's the body of Christ. He's the head of the body of Christ. And much in the same way that in our own physical sense, you can't really separate the two. We always think of these things together. Um, so it is when we think of Christ, we think of both the head and the body as one entity together. Point number two is this, is that the head of the body provides the identity for the entire body, for the whole body. And so this really connects to the first point where we said you can't think of the head as a separate entity and you can't really separate them. And so consider this, the term head of the body is not like the head of a company. It's not like a separate and distinct person telling other people what to do. It's not an externality. So it's not referring to a separate entity that gets to direct the other entities, but rather the body of Christ is part of the body. It leads from within. The head of the body is part of the body and it leads from within. And the body doesn't know, our body doesn't know, and we don't think to ourselves, hey, this head is being bossy, uh, or it's trying to tell me what to do, or trying to direct me. It's never a separate external thing. There is a natural organic union where the body and the head are one, and the head is the identifying element of the entire body. Th consider this, everything that makes you, you, is found and stems from the head. Your personality, your identity, all comes from your head. Your thoughts, the thing that creates your very life, comes from your head. And so it is with Christ. Jesus is the head, the very identity of the entire body. He is the element that fully animates the body. The third point is this, is that the mystery of Christ is being revealed to the body of Christ, which finds their identity in Jesus, who of course is the head. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25 to 27. Listen to this scripture. It says, Of which I became a minister according to the stewardship from God, which was given to me for you to fulfill the word of God. This is Paul speaking. The mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations to now has been revealed. To where? To his saints. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. What I love about this scripture is that it is so clear about what this mystery is. We read about the mystery, we talk about the mystery, and many times in church we talk about it as if it's some elusive thing that we are not supposed to know, the mysteries of God. And here the scripture is laying it out. Paul is laying out very clearly what is this mystery. He says the mystery is, um, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. That is the mystery that is revealed to us. So we have always said that the central theme of the gospel, of Christianity, of God's master plan has always been, is, and will always be about identity. It's who are you? It's not what have you done. It's not how good you have been. It's not how successful you are. It's not how happy you are. It's not what's your life like. It's none of those things. The gospel and the central theme of, of God's heart is who are you? Who am I? And this is the mystery that collectively we the body are one with Christ. And the fourth and final point is this, is that religion will always look to separate us from God while truth always unites us with God. Man, this is a clue that you can take with you and use as a filter 
um, when you're listening to, to different people speak or when you're reading in the scripture, or how to guard your heart and your mind, here's, here's one way to do that, is know that religion always looks to drive a wedge between man and God, right? It's this image of God up there and man down here. We aren't good enough. He's big. We're small. We don't deserve him, right? It's this image that I must do something to be accepted. And since I'm guaranteed to fail, there's probably more that I'm going to have to do, which ultimately will never be accepted anyway. It's this crazy circle that religion puts us through where the spirit of truth always draws us to our identity. It brings us closer to being in union with God. So carnality gives us this identity that is set apart from God. And that is what the scripture refers to as living in the flesh. It's that we're separate and distinct from him. Where the spirit of truth makes Christ our identity, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And I want to leave you with this thought as it pertains to this. Consider this, that after Eve and Adam, after Adam and Eve were deceived about their identity, the very first thing that they did was hide themselves. They separated themselves and they hid. The scripture says that they heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden and God, and God called out to them, where are you? So that which was originally internal, the spirit of God, which was in them, remember that's how they were created when God breathed inside of them and he gave them the very spirit of life, that which was internal now became an externality. They were separated from the spirit of God. And so, and so it is. Now, it was always a father's heart to continue to pursue him, just like he pursues us this very day, right? And so that was their destiny. That is our destiny, to be one with the father. And that is the blessing of this message. That is the blessing of our truth that we walk in. So take this with you this week, family. Identify with the head. Let's see ourselves as being united with Christ, that we are part of this miraculous, beautiful body. All individual members join together where life and virtue flows. And that's how we affect this world. God bless you. We love you. Stay tuned with us next week. It's going to be awesome. We'll catch you then.